Hi, Tana Marshall here with your Feel Good Friday message. And today I want to talk to you about insomnia. And I wanted to give you a little bit different atmosphere, a little bit more relaxing in case maybe you will watch this if you're having trouble sleeping sometime or maybe you stumbled across this by chance because you can't sleep. So I just want to make a relaxing atmosphere for you. And this is something that I have been dealing with on and off since I was 10. I don't even know why it started. Just all of a sudden, I couldn't sleep. I was in fourth grade. There wasn't anything heavily weighing on my mind, I don't think, at that time. And I tried to fix it by rearranging my bedroom furniture constantly. I thought maybe I would sleep better. Maybe I intuitively knew about feng shui before I ever consciously learned about it. Uh, but. It, it nothing really helped and I remember it kind of went away in a few months and I was sleeping better again but it's never fun and I think we've all dealt with it and uh, you know looking back at the different times that I've been dealing with it usually the common thread is your mind is racing about something you're worried you're stressed you can't stop thinking you're in the dark, it's quiet, which should be relaxing, but sometimes that is the worst. And, you know, there was this one time when I moved out into my first apartment by myself, I was so excited, but I remember the first few nights I was laying there thinking, oh my God, my parents are so far away. <laughs> They're like five miles away. <laughs> and my daddy, God bless him, he came over and spent the night one night to help me sleep. and. You know what actually got me over at that time was <clears throat> I just started Capitol Records and I wanted to join a band. And there was a girl I worked with uh, who needed someone in her band, so I joined a band. And I was having so much fun. I was totally preoccupied. And I stayed up late working on the music. And then I was exhausted. It was that, that really good feeling exhaustion. And so I slept well because I, I had some peace of mind. And that's what we're looking for when insomnia strikes. We need some peace of mind because then you start stressing about the fact that you're not sleeping. And then you keep looking at the clock going, oh my God, how much time till I have to get up? And none of this helps at all. So I have some suggestions for you. And there are a lot of them. Uh, some of them may work for you. Maybe some of them you've tried. Maybe some haven't worked. Maybe some you haven't heard before. But I just want you to, first of all, just try and relax about it. If you can just make peace with the fact that you're not sleeping and not get upset because I know there's that thought process of like, oh my God, I'm not asleep yet. What the heck? And that just makes it worse because then you're stressing more and more the more that time goes on. So here are a few things that you can do to help yourself get a good night's sleep. So you want to start preparing. If you've been having trouble sleeping or you just want to ensure that you're going to have a good night's sleep, prepare for bed a few hours ahead of time. Start to relax, start to unwind, get off the computer, don't get into any big conversations with anybody, uh, don't watch anything that's jarring. Please don't watch the news at night, please. <laughs> the worst thing. Please don't start your day with it. Please don't end your day with it. If you want to watch the news and catch up, please do it in the middle of the day so it'll have time to dissipate. So please no news before you go to bed. Now they say that it's not good to watch TV or be on your computer for at least an hour before you want to go to sleep. And I understand the reasoning behind that, but me personally, watching TV at night is how I unwind. So if, if that's how you unwind, I want to suggest that you watch something kind of mindless. I love to watch HGTV or Food Network, just something that is brief and entertaining, but n nothing big. Like if you get involved with a movie with storyline, you're going to get all caught up in. That's going to wake you up and get you emotionally charged and you just, you don't want that at this time. So just try and avoid the electronics, but if you do want to use the electronics, make sure you're using it in a way that's relaxing to you. And you want to make sure that your room or your home in general are cool. 70 degrees or below is best. We all sleep better when it's cooler. I don't know if you have trouble sleeping in the summer. I, I think it's really not comfortable for anybody. But 
scientifically, 70 degrees or cooler is going to ensure a better night's sleep. Obviously, make sure you have a comfortable bed, comfortable sheets, get some that are really soft and that just feel really luxurious, that just make you go, mm -hmm. In the winter, I have these furry sheets. They're called plush. And I love that they keep me really warm and it's kind of like sleeping on fleece. It's not fleece, but that's what it feels. It's just really, really soft and really warm and it just makes me feel cozy. But I can't have that on my pillow. My pillow needs to be cotton and needs to be cool. So if you're very particular about what you find comfortable, make sure that you have that for yourself in your bed. And make sure that you are warm enough or cool enough. Make sure you have the kind of covers that you like. Do you like a lot of blankets? Do you just like a really nice down comforter that keeps you warm? Do whatever you prefer. Um, if you do have any lights on in your house, like any night lights, you want to make sure that they are warm tones, like oranges, reds, because historically our ancestors were reading by candlelight at night. That was the only light that they had. And, you know, th this also involves the circadian rhythms, you know, way before, before we had electronic lights. When it got dark, people went to bed. And now we've got light and we've got energy and we can stay up all night. And sometimes it wouldn't even make a difference to us that it is nighttime outside because we can be productive 24 seven if we want to. And some people try to do that. And if, if you pride yourself on being able to function on very little sleep, that's really nothing to be proud of because it is going to take a toll on your health and you really need more rest. Maybe you can't sleep that much. I mean, me, in my life right now, I am lucky if I get three to four hours of solid sleep and that's just because that's the way my life is right now. I sleep with a baby monitor listening to my mom and she snores. <laughs> so I have to keep it on a level where I can still hear her but that the snoring doesn't keep me awake. And I've also slept with earplugs for the last 20 years. I can't sleep without them. I started wearing them when I had a noisy neighbor a long time ago. And so I have to be very careful with that. They have to be in my ears, but I don't push them in because <laughs> I have to be able to hear, but they need to be in my ears or I can't sleep. It's just a weird thing that I've developed. So usually my mom gets up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. And if I can get that deep sleep when she's sleeping deeply. I never know when she's going to get up, but on average she gets up between four and six or seven in the morning. So if I hear her, you know, I'm automatically awake and I want to go back there and check on her and make sure she makes it there and back to bed okay. And then once that happens, then I can go back to sleep again. But even on the weekends when I'm with my husband and I don't have any interruptions, my body doesn't sleep more than a solid six hours. That's just how my body chemistry is. So I want to encourage you to sleep as much as you can, as much as your body needs. And you can figure out your own schedule with that. I, I discovered my schedule, my body rhythm, after I got laid off from my job. And I actually was having insomnia for a few months, God, way more than a few months, but before I got laid off because I had switched my schedule to very early. I was going into work, leaving my house at like 6.30 in the morning, getting there by 7 because there was very little traffic on the road and I would always get a great parking spot at work and I could get a lot of work done when it was quiet and nobody was there and I really liked that. And then I could leave earlier and miss the heavier traffic coming home, but when I got home I was just so tired and I couldn't always sleep at night. You know, I wanted to go to bed at a certain time so I could get up at a certain time. And when I got laid off and just started staying up later and sleeping until I felt like getting up, and this is, you know, when my mom was self-sufficient, so I was able to sleep as long as I wanted, I discovered that my body likes to go to bed around midnight, and it wakes up around 6.30. So that's my natural rhythm. And so once I got into that, I slept very well. And uh, so, okay, so back to the, the sleep aids. So warm toned lights around your house. If you have a Himalayan salt lamp, that's really great. If you have night lights, uh, I think you can get a Himalayan salt night light as well, but just make sure that it's a warm tone 
and I've actually gotten a few from a company called Vibes Up that I would highly recommend you check them out, vibesup.com. They have all of these products that are infused with oils and crystals and gems and specific energy to help balance you out. And they have night lights that are that warm glow and they have messages like love and peace and and it's it's a really wonderful little thing. If you need a little night light, I would recommend that. Another thing is get your phone away from your bed. You want to keep your bed as free from electronics as you can. And I sleep right next to a plug, so I kind of can't get away from that. But <clears throat> the only lamp I have, <clears throat> excuse me, is a Himalayan salt lamp on my nightstand. And my alarm clock is battery operated. And it does not have a light that's on. So that's one thing I would highly recommend that you, if you want an alarm clock where the time is displayed all the time, please make sure it's a red display. If it's blue or green, that sends a message to your brain to wake up. And you definitely don't want that because a lot of times if you can see the time all the time, you keep looking at it going, oh my God, it's, it's 1 a.m. Oh my God, it's 2 a.m. Oh my God, it's 3 a.m. So if you can get a clock where the, the light is off, mine is off and I just I can push the button and it'll light up if I want to see it and it's actually it's pink so it's a warm warm tone uh, the, the clock is pink the light is pink everything's pink so um, it doesn't disrupt me but if I don't want to know what time it is and sometimes I don't want to know then I don't have to know and it doesn't stress me out so definitely pay attention to what kind of clock you have next to your bed if you have a clock next to your bed. Get your iPad away from your bed. Get your computer away from your bed. Just if you want them in the room, put them on the other side of the room so that they are not right next to you. Because I know some people sleep with their phones. People, please don't sleep with your phone. <laughs> you just get it away from you so you can sleep. And, you know, keep it on if you want to hear it. If you need, if you're waiting, ever waiting for messages, you want to hear anything that comes in, keep it on. But get it away from your bed. Um, what else? Oh, if, uh, if you feel so inclined, a hot bath or hot shower is very good for relaxing your body before you're getting ready to go to sleep. You can add some lavender oil and lavender oil in general is really good. It, it can actually make you feel like ooh, ooh, kind of zoned out. It, it can be that strong. So you can put it on a Kleenex, put it next to your bed. You can put a little dab on your pillow put them in your bath water if you take a bath. Um, sometimes I actually just put it right here so that I'm I'm breathing it. Or you can put it on your neck so that it'll, it'll float up and, and you'll be breathing that. And that's very good for relaxing you. And I had to make tons of notes about all these things because there were so many things I wanted to suggest to you. Um, some natural supplements that I use that I would recommend. <clears throat> L-theanine, which is a derivative of green tea. It's actually for anxiety and relaxation, but it's got so many health benefits. It helps with your memory and your cognitive abilities, and it helps counter the negative effects of caffeine. Oh, no coffee, too close to bedtime. <laughs> Please cut off your coffee consumption in the early afternoon, just in case you're sensitive to that. Um, but uh, L-theanine, it actually helps improve your immune system. But I love this stuff because you can take it on a regular basis just to kind of keep a feeling of well-being. It'll help you feel balanced and just um, just feel good. But if you take a lot of it, you can't OD on it. It's not going to hurt you. But if you take a lot of it, you'll get very zoned out but not groggy. It, it's hard to describe, but it's, it's really relaxing. And if I ever have anxiety that's keeping me from sleeping, if, I've, if I'm stressed about something or worried about something, I will take three or four L-theanine and I will be so mellowed out. So I love this stuff. I highly suggest you check it out. I like the Enzymatic Therapy brand, but I'm sure anything is, is great. Melatonin is a great supplement. Um, they suggest that you only use it if maybe if you're jet lagged and you're trying to get back into a time zone. It's, it's obviously good when we switch the times for daylight savings time in the fall and in the spring if you're having trouble adjusting to that. And I really wish they would get rid of it. There's really no reason for it. We don't need daylight savings time. And a lot of people have car accidents and heart attacks afterwards because it just messes with your body rhythm. So <clears throat> you want to get 
into a place where you can get back into a good rhythm. So melatonin is good with that. I take it almost every night anyway, just because it helps me mellow out and it, it relaxes me and it works for me. And um, valerian root, it smells like dirty socks. It's gross, but this will totally knock you out. If you take enough of this stuff, you, you will be kind of groggy and feel a little drugged out, but it's natural. So that's a really good one. There are a lot of combinations, herbal combinations of valerian root and skull cap and passion flower and hops and all of these things will help relax you and help you uh, mellow out so you can get to sleep. And um, oh, and if you want to have maybe a glass of wine a few hours before you go to bed, th there have been times when I needed to relax and so I would just go take a, a swig of something like a swig of Jack Daniels. Um, that you know if, if you need to stay away from alcohol obviously disregard this suggestion but if you are inclined to have a little drink here and there little drink little <laughs> just a little bit will help mellow you out the warm milk thing is actually true it's got the tryptophan in it and you know obviously tryptophan supplements are great too but a little bit of warm milk um, I don't know about cocoa because chocolate is caffeine and it's a stimulant, so I would avoid hot cocoa. But the warm milk, it actually kind of works and can relax you a little bit. It's got to be real milk because that's what has the tryptophan in it. Um, I also want to suggest EFT tapping. If you're familiar with tapping on meridian points, this is something that I'll do in the middle of the night where you can just address the fact that you're not sleeping. You know, even though I can't sleep, I still deeply and completely love and accept myself. And you can just go through the points. There are lots of tutorials online. My favorite resource is thetappingsolution.com. I'm sure they have one on there for uh, sleep, for insomnia. But you just go through and you just tap, you know, I can't believe I'm not sleeping, this insomnia. I, I want to go to sleep, my body's relaxing, just, it's a great resource, it's natural, it'll help relax you, oh, and <laughs> the lights are doing weird things in my house, um, so, uh, so definitely try tapping. One thing I've gotten into big time recently is yoga, and uh, my favorite, favorite resource is Yoga with Adrienne on YouTube, and that's also her website, yogawithadrienne.com. She has got a yoga routine for everything. And she has several for bedtime, for relaxation. And I've used those several times before I go to bed. And that's a really great way to relax. I actually do it right here, right in front of the fireplace with these lights on. This is where I do my morning yoga. This is where I will do my nighttime yoga because this is a very relaxing spot for me in my house. So that's something that's helped me get a better night's sleep too. And just a couple of little things that I want to suggest to you that I do. When I turn the lights off and I'm ready to go to sleep, I actually will set an intention and I will say to myself, I intend to fall asleep quickly and easily and sleep deeply and peacefully through the night enjoying beautiful, inspiring dreams. And that's sometimes the last thing I remember thinking. And I also pray. I also just thank God for everything in my life. You know, my, my body, my health, my family, my friends, my home, my work, the abundance in my life. So you can just make a list of everything that you're grateful for. And maybe you're familiar with the song that Bing Crosby sings in White Christmas, where he says, uh, count your blessings instead of sheep. And then you'll fall asleep counting your blessings. So that's a great way to try and drop off too. And, um, and I also have a little guardian angel that I talk to and I ask her to sprinkle dream dust over me and I imagine her <laughs> like Tinkerbell with little glittery dust like sprinkling it over my body and, and uh, that always tends to relax me too. And another thing that helps your brain wind down is counting backwards from 10 to 1. There's a psychological aspect to that that does help your body relax and unwind. <clears throat> if you want to listen to meditation recordings, there are a ton of them on YouTube. Maybe you have some uh, in your own library. Those are great to listen to, are just relaxing music, 
Some people like the, the boxes with natural sounds. That helps them relax. Um, oh, I thought of something I was going to share with you, and it just flew out of my head. Um, let's see. The, the relaxing sounds and the uh, intention. Oh, gosh. Let me look at my notes. <laughs> oh, shoot. What was it? It popped into my head, and then it just popped right out. Um, oh, well. Uh, but just the most important thing is just try to relax and do whatever you think is going to help you relax. If you want to lay in bed and hope to drop off, drop off to sleep, then just stay in bed and try and relax as much as you can. But if you are stressing yourself out, it might actually help to read. You know, maybe you have an iPad, and in this case, yes, bring your iPad back <laughs> to the bed, because that nighttime setting is great. We have the black background and the words are in white, because then you can read in the dark and you're not turning on all kinds of lights, so it's not going to wake up your brain that much. But reading is great. I usually can't even get through more than a few pages before I'm sleeping. I've actually had my iPad hit me in the face because <laughs> holding it up and I kind of drifted off. and I'm, glad I haven't given myself a black eye or chipped a tooth or something. Um, so, or if you want to turn the TV on, I mean, that really is kind of shocking, but if it's going to relax you, I mean, if you're really that bad and you just can't sleep, maybe turn on a movie. Or if you have some inspiring DVDs, like I've talked about Louise Hay's movie, You Can Heal Your Life. Uh, I've got Wayne Dyer's movie, The Shift. I've got a bunch of Joel Osteen. DVDs. I've just I've got a nice library of uh, relaxing, inspiring things that I could watch if I do want to watch something and try and relax myself that way. So just think of whatever is going to relax you and distract you. You just want to get distracted from the fact that you can't sleep because that in and of itself will just perpetuate the insomnia. So just just tell yourself all is well. This is only temporary for whatever reason. Oh, I know what I was going to tell you. If you have some kind of affirmation or a mantra that you want to repeat over and over to yourself that just makes you feel better, my go-to primarily is I love and approve of myself. So if I can't sleep, I'll just start doing that by rote. Oh, I love and approve of myself, I love and approve of myself, I love and approve of myself. Sometimes I actually will do the 23rd Psalm that really relaxes me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That, because that makes me feel very secure, and I feel like God is watching over me, and it's just got a lot of really peaceful images in, in the whole uh, psalm, so that's something I would suggest if that appeals to you. Um, but just, if you can think of something that you can repeat over and over to yourself to kind of calm yourself down and reassure yourself and help yourself relax, maybe just all is well all is well this too shall pass all is well and even if you don't sleep all night just keep telling yourself it's only temporary it's getting better all is well and just try and find that peace of mind because that's what you need once we can relax our minds usually good sleep will follow so I know this is a longer video today. I just really wanted to give you a lot of resources. And like I said, if you stumbled on this during the night, maybe me talking so much has put you to sleep. <laughs> if it did, I'm glad I could help. But I hope that some of these suggestions help you. And just know that you are not alone. There are people out there dealing with this all the time. So that, that's something you can feel very lonely when you're awake at 3, 4 in the morning you feel like you're the only one and just just know that you're not and just know that you have good energy surrounding you you've got your guardian angels there they don't ever sleep they're still with you so just remind yourself that that they're they're there and um, just do whatever you can to take care of yourself during this time and just know that I'm, I'm sending you good relaxing vibes and wishing you every night a great night's sleep and I hope that this helped and I hope these videos give you some some joy some inspiration every week and I want to thank you for watching once again if you're new to my videos I hope that you will make them a habit and if you have been watching and you enjoy them remember to subscribe to my channel on YouTube 
And if you feel so inspired, if you think this would help somebody, please forward it on to them. I would so appreciate it. And if you would like these videos delivered straight to your inbox every Friday, jump over to my website, tannamarshall.com, and jump on the mailing list. We'd have love to have you join us there. And with that, I just want to wish you a good night's sleep. Whether you're watching this in the morning, I wish you a good night's sleep tonight. If you're having trouble sleeping right now, I just want to remind you that I'm with you. You are not alone. You can relax and just do whatever to take care of yourself. And it will be okay. You will fall asleep eventually. You will find what works for you. And you will get into a nice pattern where you can sleep well every night. So with that, I want to wish you a great weekend. I'll see you next time. Take care.